Welcome back. I know you're ready for more math problems. You can hear them, right? I can hear the sweat rolling down their faces. More math, more math. I know. Well, let's, let's not disappoint you. Here we go. Essential question. How do I isolate the variable x in equations of the form ax plus b equals c? Now, if you notice, here's the key that we have here, that there's something being multiplied and added. So we call those two-step equations. We're going to solve them in, of course, real-world problems. Now, um, we'll have you get your brains in gear by doing a few things. What you see on this, pause the program slide. And the answer is, well, you would subtract. And you would divide. And then write an equation three more than four times the number n is 19. Three more than four times the number n equals 19. Now, if you wrote three plus four n equals 19, that's fine. It doesn't matter order for addition. Remember, subtraction does make a difference. Some problems for you to do on skill check A. And when you look at number one, what is the first inverse operation that you would do to solve this problem? Okay, then actually you're going to subtract seven. Now, if you said divide by four, I'll explain to you why this is wrong. On number two, you would multiply by 12, not add three. On number three, you would add nine, not multiply by two. On number four, you would add five, not divide by two. So you might be asking, well, what is the reasoning on the order that I'm supposed to do here. Here's how we solve the problems. We determine the order in which the operations are performed on the variable. So we look at the equation and we see what's being done first, what's being done second, and then, step two, undo the operations by performing the inverse operations in reverse order, of course, on both sides of the equation. Now, why is it in the reverse order? What reverse order? The reverse order is, what do you normally do first here? When we're going through, if I have this, what do I do first? Yeah, we multiply and divide, and then we add and subtract. We have there the 5 times 4 plus 3, uh, 20 plus 3. I mean, you can't add the 4 and the 3 first, or the 3 and the 5. You have to multiply first, and then add 3, 23. But if I make that an equation, what I'm doing, or what I have there, is what is x? Now, here, I know that I'm taking 5 times 4. My question is, what is all of this? Here, I know what all of this is equal to, but I don't know what goes in for x. Can you see how they're exactly the opposite? 5 times 4 plus 3, well, 20, 23, 5x plus 3 equals 23. What goes in there for x? Okay. So what I'm basically doing is I'm going backwards between these two. I'm really undoing what we do here. Okay, what do we do here? We use the multiplication, division, and then addition, subtraction. Well, here I'm going to be undoing, doing the opposite. I'm going to be subtracting 3 from both sides. 
getting 5x equals 20. Now I divide both sides by 5 to get x equal 4. What's my answer down here? 4. Well, I knew that to start with. What's the answer to this? 23. Well, I knew that to start with. They're, they're opposite processes. So I see it, but I don't understand it. How do you do the opposite processes? Because, you know, order, operations, versus an expression and an equation. Because the expression is doing. The equation already has the doing done. Okay, it's take this number and multiply by 5, then add 3, and you get 23. Well, we have to, the last thing was adding, so to undo, the first thing we have to do is subtract. And then the finish by, by dividing. I, I just don't get it. It's like you're talking some other language. Okay, can you see that the expression 5 times 4 plus 3, 23, and the equation 5x plus 3 equals 23, 4, are opposites of each other? Yeah. Okay, let's take a non-mathematical, simple little thing. It's morning, you're getting ready to go somewhere, and you have bare feet. What do you put on first? The socks. Then you put the shoes on. Now, it's the end of the day, you come home. Ah, I'm going to take my socks off first because they went on first. No. You are undoing. So what comes off first? Les shoes. French, right? Okay. Then, after you take the shoe off, then you take the sock off. They're opposite processes, so you do the steps in the opposite order. And that's what we're talking about here. One is an expression and we're evaluating it. The other is an equation, and we're solving it. Those are opposite. And we will see another way it's opposite when we look at the first example. Example 1, solve 3x minus 4 equals negative 10. Now, what's happening to the x? Well, it's multiplied by 3, and then you subtract 4. So what we have to do, the last step, that was done to the x is subtracting, so we have to add 4. We have to do the inverse operations in the reverse order. Okay, so we add 4 to both sides. That gives us 3x equals negative 6. Now we do the division of both sides by 3. x equals negative 2. Now for the check, Guess what the check is going to be? It's going to be like this. This is the solving, x equals 4. Okay, when you're done here, we put that 4 in, and we check it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do on this problem. We're going to put that negative 2 in. Now, what do I do first there? Yeah, you multiply first, and then you add. So that's negative 6 minus 4, which is negative 10. And that is what we started out with. So when the x was multiplied by 3 and then subtracted by 4, we get negative 10. Okay, negative 2. Check, put that in, and do it. That means multiplication comes first and then the addition, and there's our answer, and yes, that checks. So solving is undoing. Checking is doing. Checking uses PEMDAS. Okay. With solving, we're going backwards. So we're going to add, subtract before we multiply, divide. Okay, example two. Three plus y 
divided by 4 equals negative 7. Now, what is being done first? Well, the first thing you'd have to do, because this is a parentheses, you know, that's a grouping symbol, gemdis, if you use that. So dividing by 4, we'd have to multiply both sides by 4 first. Okay. And that's going to get rid of that division and give us 3 plus y equals negative 28. Now we undo the plus 3 with minus 3 and get negative 31. Now let's put that in and check it. What do I do first in the checking? That's in the numerator. I'm going to be adding. I, mean, I can't divide by 4 yet. I have to add those together and get negative 28. Now I can do the division and get negative 7. So that time you had to undo the division first. Right. So that means we're going to divide last. Actually, work it out as we're checking it and doing it. Inverse operations, reverse order. Okay, example three. The opposite of x divided by 4 plus 3 equals 15. Okay. So the first thing we have to do, we have to get rid of this plus 3. So we'll do that by subtracting from both sides. The opposite of x divided by 4 equals 12. So now you know it's divided. What are you going to do? Yeah, we're going to multiply both sides by 4, negative 4. We're going to multiply both sides by negative 4. That gives us x equals negative 48. Now let's do the check, which is doing, not undoing. So we put that negative 48 in for x, the opposite of negative 48. That's 48. 48 divided by 4, that's 12. 12 plus 3, 15. Now look, what do we do first? Well, undo really first. Uh, we undid the addition with subtraction. Then we undid the division with multiplication. So over here, what did you do first? You divided. The last step was multiplying. The first step is dividing. The Over here in solving, the first step was subtracting. Here in checking, the last step is adding. So as I said, you go through and undo to solve. Then you do that reverse order with the inverse operations of everything you did to solve to check. They are opposite processes in the same way that addition and subtraction by themselves are opposite. The solving and the checking are opposite processes. Okay, example four, an easy one. Five minus x equals 10. So the first thing we have to do is get rid of that 5. That's a positive, so we'll put negative 5 on both sides. That gives us the opposite of x equals 5. Now, remember, we had this in the last lesson. You could multiply by negative 1, you could divide by negative 1, or you could take the opposite, any one of those three. And you get x equals negative 5. Now, let's check that out and have 5 minus negative 5. Blink, blink. 5 plus 5. Yep, that is 10. Mm -hmm. Check. Okay. Please do a few problems on skill check B. And we have 3n minus 5 equals 16. So the first thing we have to do is get rid of that minus 5 by adding 5 to both sides. And then we're going to take that 3n equals 21 and divide both sides by 3 and get n equals 7. I'm not going to show you the checks. 
Number three, x minus five, that is all divided by negative 12, that's equal to two. So since it's all divided by negative 12, the first thing we have to do is multiply both sides by negative 12. Okay, that's x minus five, and then we added five to both sides, and x equals negative 19. Okay, real world problems on example five. In 2019, the Minnesota Twins were the most improved team in baseball, winning 101 games. If this record was 55 wins less than twice their number of wins in 2018, how many wins did they have in 2018? Well, let G be the number of games they won in 2018. So it says that the 101 is... 55 less than twice the number. So from that number, we subtract 55. What number? Twice. So you have 101 games is twice the number of games in 2018 minus 55. So that's how you write the equation. Now we have to undo that subtraction by adding 55, get 156. And then we undo the multiplication by two by dividing both sides by two to get 78. So the year before they had 78 wins. In 2019, they had 101 wins. Well, how many more did they have? 88, 98, 23 more wins. Okay, next. Example six, Tony bought a trumpet for $264. He made a down payment of 75, and he's gonna make payments of $35 a month. How many months? Okay, so we're gonna find how many months at $35 a month and the $75 down payment, and that has to total the price of the trumpet. So M is the months. 75 down payment plus $35 each month equals 264. Can you see what to do now? Subtract 75 from both sides. Okay. Now we take that and divide it by 35. Come up with 5.4. Now do you have a 0.4 months? No. Will he be done paying it with that fifth payment? No. So it will be a partial payment on the sixth month. So you should say it will take six months to pay off the trumpet. Now, of course, you could pay that last bit at the fifth month. We don't know. But if it's $35, five, and then there's some left over that has to be paid on the sixth month. Our essential question, how do I isolate the variable x in equations like that. We use the inverse operation to undo addition and subtraction of the b. Then we use the inverse operation to undo the multiplication division by the a. There are exceptions to that when you have the fraction line. Okay, in that case, we have to undo that division before we can deal with what's you know, the division by multiplication before we can deal what's in that numerator and work with that. But usually, generally, those are the steps. Work on your